Today, I want to talk about what it means to be a child of God. We're going to read from John chapter 1, verse 12. It reads as follows. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but those that are born of God. In verse 14 reads as follows, it says, And the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only born of the Father, full of grace and truth. When we think of being born of God, we should think of the way we are born today of different situations that we find ourselves in. For instance, there are many people that are born of the slave trade. They may be 20 years old today, but their life is born from the slave trade. That is where they find their identity. That is where they see their roots. That is where they find their life. The way they relate to reality is all based on the slave trade. In the very same way, in South Africa, we can find people finding their life born from apartheid. Apartheid could be over long ago, but we still find people. They can be 15 years old, 25 years old. They could have been born after the apartheid era, but they are fully born from the apartheid and what happened there. We find the same in some of the Afrikaans-speaking white people in South Africa. They find their life born from the Angolan Boer War. So the Anglo-Boer War and what happened there, the concentration camps, is their father. It gives birth to their emotions, is what they relate to wherein they find their identity. They see the harm and the wrong that happened to them as the source of their life. They cannot be who they are without that event. If you would take that event out of their life, they would not know who they are. They would not have a point of reference. Their point of reference is the harm or the bad that has happened to them. Many times that is why we want to know, uh, we, we look at history to find our identity because we don't know who we will be unless we can look at history where in history the news media and what has happened in the world can be the father of our lives, where we are born from the negative that has happened in the world. We can also then look at some positive things that has happened in the world and then find our identity in that, and then we can be born of that. I hope you hear what I'm talking about when we talk about being born from something. Now, the scripture says in John chapter 1, verse 12, but as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God or to be born of God. These are those who believe upon the name of Jesus. They find their birth not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of a man, but of God. In other words, they will find the life that's born in them, not from Judaism, this is what the scripture would mean, or from what happened as pertaining to the uh, heathen and their relations to idols and idol worship, they will find that there is a life born in them that comes straight from God. They will look at their history and they will see the resurrected Jesus. They will see new creation. They will see a brand new reality. And from that reality, they will have a life born from that reality. And that life that is born in them is then born of God. So when we behold Jesus, the fact that he died, the fact that he was buried, that he was bodily raised from the dead, and we can see our link to that, we can link ourselves to that as what people would look at the transatlantic slave trade, and they would link themselves to that and so be born from it, although it is something that has uh, passed away long ago, as what people would look at political leaders, someone they might hate, and identify with what is happening there and linking themselves to that, you'll find that the very political leader they hate becomes their daddy, giving birth to emotions in them, living in them, living their lives for them. That leader who you might disagree with, 
wakes up in the morning and he decides what you're going to think. He decides what you're going to feel. He decides how you're going to act that day. He decides how you're going to spend your time. He decides what you're going to talk about at the dinner table. He is your God. He's your daddy. He's your father. You are born from him. Why? Because you link yourself to him. If we can see our link to God in Jesus Christ, and we can see that as true and real, we will find that we look back 2,000 years ago, we see the empty grave, we see the glorified Jesus, and we today see Jesus seated at the right hand of God, which is our link, and we would find that the life we have is then born from God. It is not born of blood, meaning who I am is not found in blood relatives. It's not found in I am an Afrikaner or I am a Zulu or a Kosa or a Sutu or a Khoi. I am a new creation because I found a link between me and God that is stronger than what anything else could ever be in this world. And from that link, I find a life born from God. Now, when we look at history and we find our link to history and a life born from that, what has happened in the past could have passed away. And the power of our birth is only relational and what's going on in our mind. It is not true. It's not real. It is something that happens because of what we are thinking. It's to the power of cognitive ability and to the power of our psyche. But when we behold the resurrected Jesus, it has the power of the psyche. It has the power of making a mental connection, but it also has the power of reality because Jesus was truly raised from the dead. He is truly Lord. It has the power of the Holy Spirit to bring forth life in us today. It does have that link. It does have that power. We need to understand that when we believe in Jesus, there is a power that comes forth in us that is on account of truth. And that is what we read in John chapter 1 verse 16, seeing this truth, talking about the birth that there is in Jesus Christ. Let me quickly just read John 1 14 and then we'll go to the rest. It says, and the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. And we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. This is an example of one that is not born of blood, that's not born of the will of the flesh, that is born of God. We find Jesus Christ being born of God bodily. And then it goes on and it tells us in verse 16 to 18 of his fullness, of this life that is born Uh, in Jesus, where Jesus bodily was reborn. He was born of God, where he doesn't owe his birth to blood, to Mary, neither to the will of the flesh, his ability to obey the law or any of that. Who he is, is on account of being recreated, newly made by God the Father. He says, of that fullness have we all received grace, for grace, the grace that gave new birth to Jesus, which now offers us new birth. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and what God truly had in mind came by Jesus Christ. No man has seen God at any time, but the one that was born afresh, the only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, who is at the right hand of God. He has declared or revealed God. So what he's saying is the way we become a child of God is belief in Jesus. As we believe in Jesus, we receive of what Jesus received in his resurrection, and we find that God is then revealed in us. We're not born from the Atlantic slave trade. We're not born from apartheid. We're not born from the injustices of the world. We're not born from political leaders that is telling lies and that are corrupt. We don't have them as our daddy anymore. We are not born of what happened to us when we were children. We are not born from past molestations and sexual immorality and what has happened to us in the past. No, we've got a new birth. 
And that birth is not just something that is spiritual in the sense of non-material. It is, uh, it is a birth that takes place from heaven into the depths of our physicality, defined in the empty grave from where we are a new creation. As we believe that, we find that we are the sons of God, and we've got the right to be the sons of God, defined as the display window of heaven where God comes and displays his life in our lives today. To those who believe that Jesus raised from the dead, and you can make that link between him and you, to you who believe that, has, you've been given the right to have a life that's not born from past hurts, but that's born from God. Amen.